Namaste everyone. Happy World Environment Day. Good morning and cordial welcome to one and all for today's webinar on celebrating biodiversity organized by Department of Biotechnology in association with Students for Development. I'm Dr. Pratibha Kayes, Head Department of Biotechnology, NSS Program Officer, Kaylee SNC. It gives me great and immense pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar on celebrating biodiversity. Any occasion needs the divine blessings of the Lord Almighty. Let us invoke the divine grace of Lord. Sahana Ovatu, Sahano Bunaktu, Sahaviriam Karava Vahai, Tejas Vinava Dita Mastu, Mavidvi Shavahai. Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi. Let us be to, in the meaning of this loka, let us be together, let us eat together, let us produce energy together, let us there be no limit to our energy, let us there be no ill feeling among us. Om, peace, peace, peace. I'm deeply honored to see you all here. Today this webinar has been organized on the eve of World Environment Day with the theme celebrating biodiversity. Dear students, we have amongst us an eminent embraced speaker to share her views on celebrating biodiversity. It is indeed a great pleasure and honor to welcome today's invited guest speaker, Dr. Indu K. Murthy, Principal Research Scientist, Center for Study Science, Study of Science, Technology and Policy, Bengaluru, to this World Environment Day celebration. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation and for gracing this occasion. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Once again, a big thanks to you, ma'am. Dear students, we always keep coming to you with a wonderful opportunity. Now, I would like to request Ms. Sahana, Students for Development Volunteer, to introduce today's guest speaker to this gathering. Over to Sahana. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am pleasure to introduce ma'am, uh, Dr. K Indu K. Murthy, who is currently the principal research scientist leading adaptation and risk analysis work at Center for Study of Science, Technology and Policy. She was formerly a consultant scientist at the Center of Sustainable Technologies, Indian Institute of Science for more than two decades. She specializes uh, in uh, forestry and climate change related issues like inventory, mitigation, vul uh, vulnerability, profiling and adaptations. She is land use change and forestry expert involved in na National Communication of India to UNFCCC. She has developed CDM and REDD plus projects in India and has been involved in formulation of climate profiling and green growth strategies for ongoing proposed and proposed developmental projects. Uh, she is forestry and climate change consultant for United Nations, the World Bank and other multilateral uh, agencies. She has published many journal articles and one of the contributing article, uh, authors for IPCC fourth assessment report 2007 and Geo6 Asia Special Environment Outlook 6 of UNEP. I welcome you, ma'am, for the session, and uh, we are blessed to have you here. And uh, I'll hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sahana. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much. much. Yeah, one second. Thank you, Sahana, for a great introduction. Uh, and thank you, ma'am, for being with us. Uh, our environment is of the most important aspects to uh, survive on this planet. Moreover, it is the only thing that can make life uh, sustainable. Without it, we cannot survive even a single day, for instance, our skin will burn, the lungs will get ruptured, and our blood pressure uh, would raise. Furthermore, we will not have food and water uh, enough, and this will be this will also be possible because of the imbalance of heat and atmospheric pressure. Thus, it is important that we should take care of our environment, also abandon the, all the exploitation that we are uh, causing it. Everywhere, everywhere people celebrate uh, World Environment Day on 5th June. I request everyone to celebrate Vanamosawa weekly once if possible. People from more than uh, uh, 100 countries uh, celebrate this World Environment Day. is run by the United Nations Environment Program since 1973. The main purpose of celebrating this uh, day to spread awareness. The awareness about conservation of our environment and our Mother Earth. The theme for World Environment Day 2020 is celebrating biodiversity. Let's celebrate today. 
With this brief note, I present before you Dr. Indu K. Murthy, Principal Research Scientist from Centre for Study Science, Technology and Policy, Bengaluru, to address on today's webinar, Celebrating Biodiversity. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Pratipa. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I just hope everyone's safe in your own spaces and are following the norms uh, uh, to keep yourself and others as well uh, safe uh, during this pandemic. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, happy World Environment Day to each and every one of you. And I'm sure uh, all of us very well know and we do appreciate that environment is an integral part of our lives. So there is no way we can live without it. And coming from a city, the garden city of Bangalore, uh, I think uh, we are very closely kind of living with the environment. Environment is a very broad term, of course. Uh, but let's start with the trees that we see around us and the birds that these trees uh, have multiple of them and the monkeys, the squirrels and a whole lot of others that are there. So um, thank you again. And uh, I'm going to kind of uh, make a, a presentation hoping to motivate some of you uh, to look at biodiversity from a new perspective and then try and do your own bit uh, in whatever spaces you are in. It could be your neighborhood, it could be your own home spaces, or it could be at your own workplaces. So that's the intent of this uh, uh, presentation. So now I'll, I'll just start my presentation in a bit. Right, so the theme of my presentation is trying to look at greening. When I say greening, planting trees in the first place for biodiversity conservation, which is the theme of uh, this year and for this day as well for climate change mitigation. All of us know climate change is a reality and uh, uh, we do talk about it, we do read about it day in and day out. So how does planting trees help in that aspect? I'll touch upon that. And of course, ultimately sustainable development, which is the core of any development that's happening anywhere around the world. So to begin with, uh, first let's look at the cover, the forest cover in India and then Karnataka. So as you will see here, uh, you know, not everywhere do we see forests. I mean, that's not because there are people, there is settlement, but it is also nature's way. You know, there are certain soils, there are certain conditions that uh, trees or forests require for thriving and which is what makes them pre be present in certain places. So you see here the forest cover map of India and onto your right is for Karnataka. And on the Karnataka map, you will see that the left edge of it is completely a strip of forest, which is nothing but our Pashtimagatta, the Western Ghats forest, which is a biodiversity hotspot. So when we say a biodiversity hotspot, what do we mean? One, it is home to several thousands of species, some of them which are even endemic to the region. When I say endemic, it is present only here and nowhere else in the world. Please note, nowhere else in the world is it present. So it's, the habitat is extremely special. It's a niche that the species requires for thriving. And it is not just the forest tree species, but also several thousands of birds are also endemic to the region. There are amphibians, a lot of frogs, which are endemic to the region. So multiple things. It's not just the trees. We are talking about birds. We are talking about squirrels. We are talking about large monkeys, large mammals, and a whole lot of microorganisms as well. Things that you can't see, but which is very important, right? So that's something uh, which is what these forests can do. And over and above that, the, these forests, the Western Ghats forests, are where the rivers have their origin. As many as eight west flowing rivers in Karnataka have their origin in this place. So if you don't have the forest, you don't have water sources as well. So which is something which we will need to remember whenever we talk about uh, biodiversity or forests in particular. 
Now, interestingly, this map here is, you know, it's a, it's a splash of colors out here, but then what does this say? This is looking at the wastelands that are available. See, despite so much of forest, there is still a lot of land which potentially can be brought under tree cover. So when you bring it under tree cover, when you green these patches, uh, you're not just creating a forest, but you're also creating probably home to several thousands of species. That's the biodiversity angle to greening or planting trees or creating a forest. So, which is what I wanted to convey through this map out here. So basically, if you look at Karnataka, still about 77% of the area is non-forest, which means to say there is no forest and potentially, I mean, I'm not saying everything needs to be converted into forest. We do need spaces for settlements, industries, a whole lot of other things. The idea is to strike a balance. How do you strike a balance between environment and man's development? So that's the huge challenge that the, uh, many of the policymakers, not just in India, but all across the world are facing. You know, they're grappling with this challenge. How do you strike a balance? Because, you know, if one becomes heavier than the other, it is at the cost of something. So the cost and benefit is something that people are grappling with. So now when you green, like I already said, when you grow trees, when you plant forests, what do you achieve? A, biodiversity conservation. When I say biodiversity, I would like to emphasize again, we are not talking just about the plant or the flora, right? The plant species, but it's also the animal kingdom, right? And when I say animal kingdom, don't just think of the tigers or the lions or the bears. There are a whole lot of small mammals. There are a whole lot of bird species. There are a whole lot of microorganisms also, which are finding their homes in these spaces. So you conserve the biodiversity because you're promoting those different species there. Uh, when I say species, it's the bere bere jati maravilla, for instance. It could be mango, it could be neem, it could be a tea kut tree, it could be a rosu tree, right? So those kind of different, different varieties or whatever you want to call it are called species uh, when we talk about flora. The second aspect is, I already spoke about this without using the term ecosystem service. So when I say an ecosystem, uh, an ecosystem is, you know, where multiple things live together. You know, a forest ecosystem. So when I say a forest, yes, it does have trees, but it is an ecosystem or a home or an environment in itself because along with the forest, you have all the other species also living. So when you create a forest, there are a whole lot of services. Like I already said, it could create habitat. So habitat is one service or it could provide food and water services. So when I say food, people eat fruits, people extract certain species and then use it in their cooking purposes or they market it for other purposes. Or there are a whole lot of medicinal plants also that are being in use. So these are the ecosystem services. Aesthetic, you know, you see a good tree with a lot of flowers, particularly in Bangalore. It's so pleasant, it's so pleasing. So aesthetic purposes. Recreation, you have parks, wherever there are a lot of trees, you would like to go for a walk underneath these trees rather than walking out in the sun. And of course, education and awareness. People could use these spaces for taking in, you know, students, for people who are studying botany, for instance, right? That is important. Or it could be for general awareness building. Health. The health aspects of it is multiple. Where there, are, where there is greenery, where you kind of have certain trees. I'm sure uh, if you have uh, elderly people in your home, they will always say this thing. If, or if you're from a rural background or if you visited any of the villages they'd say you know honge maradadili atwa you know bevin maradadi bevin gali honge gali is extremely good for health they have their medicinal properties so this is just one example i'm giving and of course pollution abatement it provides shade and of course the last but not the least is that there's something called carbon sinks that are created when you grow trees i'll talk about it during my uh, uh, talk over the next few minutes, which will be very important for addressing 
climate change. Now the question is, people might argue that, you know, okay, where is the place for greening? Where do I plant trees? There is so much, there's so many people, there's so many demands on land, there's competition for land, for development, for industries, for uh, building, for housing, or for multiple things. So where is the space? So the question is, you know, if you, if you think of trees or creative forests, if you think of only the forest land, then we become restricted. So then, what do you do? So you can probably grow trees even on farmland or cropland. So when I'm, what I'm saying is on agricultural land, but I'm not saying replace paddy, replace sorghum or replace maize. There are ways of intercropping. You can grow an annual crop, which is our food crops or cereals, along with some trees. And that's a system of forestry, uh, which is very well doing in many parts of India as it is. And of course, community land, that's the public spaces. Uh, in villages, you have something called gomar, which is public land for grazing their cattle and other, play, other animals, you know, sheep, goats, etc. And of course, wastelands, which is barabumi, right? Which probably with some greenery could be better. And of course, we have our own towns and cities. There are residential complexes, there are commercial places, or institutions, in your own institutions, you would, if there is space, you would, have, you would see trees. Or if there is potential to grow more trees, it makes sense to green them as well. And of course, roadside. Roadside plantations are quite common. And if there are any other spaces, those could be taken as well. Now, whenever people do a greening, there are certain principles that need to be followed because you just cannot go and say, okay, plant this here, plant this there. The idea is, you know, you are trying to promote conservation of tree and that is plant species and some animal species. So flora and fauna, tree, birds, butterflies, a whole lot of them. Secondly, you want to improve or enhance the services. When I say ecosystem services, it could be for prevention of soil erosion. It could be for water conservation or it could be for providing certain food species. Or you want to reduce... Uh, you know, provide opportunities for uh, tourism or re regulate the microclimate. So there are a whole lot of things that people kind of consider whenever they are doing uh, greening on a large scale. This needn't be, you needn't worry if you're planting a few trees here and there. Only if you're doing a large scale greening, certain principles are meant to be followed. So what are the options for greening? So A, as I already said, on the forest land, which you and I cannot go and generally walk in and plant. But then forest departments, uh, at least Karnataka Forest Department, does do this uh, awareness building programs where they, they do, uh, you know, distribute seedlings on World Environment Day, that's today. And they also do large-scale planting where they invite the public to participate. So if you, if you do uh, contact the far, forest department, you might be able to go and actually do the planting in the forest land because uh, anybody and everybody cannot go and plant trees in a forest land. It's uh, the tenurial rights, as we call it. You know, it's owned by the government there. So uh, people do generally conserve, protect the area and then conserve whatever biodiversity is there. Or they might just close the area to regenerate whatever seeds or seedlings might be there or they might actually plant new trees. Now, the second is about farmlands or croplands, which I already mentioned. So the system that is widely promoted is what we call as agroforestry. Now, agroforestry is a unique land management approach where you actually blend agriculture and forestry, right? So here you have productivity, you have profits, and of course, environmental stewardship that can be promoted with agroforestry. So as you see here in the picture on the left, uh, it's a farmland. You see a lot of paddy in the right bottom picture, but there are trees on the buns, right? The edges of it have some trees or in between the rows, people plant trees. So farmers have a very innovative way of intermixing uh, annual or uh, food crops with perennial trees like mango, tamarind. Uh, in fact, uh, interestingly, if you look at it, uh, when people try to buy land, any piece of land with a very old tamarind tree, which is actually yielding, is 
the value of that land is much, much higher than a land with just food crops. Yeah, so this is just for your information. So uh, that's one way of looking at it. And then now, what are the benefits? So whenever, uh, what is the benefit for the farmer? People might ask, you know, okay, why should he grow a tree? Now, when you do a tree crop combination, um, the amount of water that is there, the water that is actually uh, retained in the soil improves because of the root systems of the trees. And also there is leaf fall, which, you know, on decay adds organic manure. It improves the soil carbon, which is very important for maintaining soil fertility and improving the production of crops. And of course, trees will serve as an additional source of income. Uh, we know that there is a lot of climate variability. When I say climate variability, it is, you know, untimely rainfall that happens or there is a long uh, dry spell. Right? They, when it is rain-fed agriculture, when it is that, uh, what happens is that when there is no rain for extended periods, uh, if people have already sown a crop, it tends to dry. So people lose out on their crop yields. So in such a case, if he has a mango or a tamarind tree, it will yield something. So it serves as an additional source of income. So, so those are the benefits of agroforestry. Now, uh, of course, the other land category is the wasteland, which is all the public lands. You know, whenever you travel on the highway, I'm sure you've seen these kinds of lands. You will come across many of these land categories where there is extended uh, land stretches, where there is one single tree somewhere or there are no trees at all. So now when you plant trees on these, when you promote biodiversity, you will halt the degradation of land. Because the minute you plant a tree, you know, its root system starts kind of uh, keeping the soil intact. And even when the soil is not exposed directly to sunlight, the oxidation process is quite, uh, you know, that is something which releases all the soil carbon into the atmosphere. So which uh, degrades the soil fertility. So that kind of gets halted. And of course, soil erosion would be limited and you can reclaim these wastelands. You can make better use of these wastelands. And of course, grass and fodder would also be available for the livestock. Now coming to the spaces that you and I live in, right? Urban spaces. So the question is, people say, okay, where is the land? These pictures beautifully show that even in an urban space, you can create green spaces. You see vertical gardens. Singapore is well known for the vertical gardens. And there are certain pockets in Bangalore, certain malls, which are trying to kind of uh, uh, mimic that or try and see if they can create vertical gardens. So it's on the buildings. Uh, sometimes, you know, even in a, think of a very desert kind of a place like Dubai. You will see, if you have a satellite picture, a lot of greenery. How does that happen? That's because on the rooftops of these huge high-rise buildings, they create tree structures. They create gardens on top it is artificially maintained but it works very well so now uh, these are the multiple areas that possibly could be used and what are the different kinds of things that people can do in towns and cities so this is just an example i won't spend much time uh, the presentation will be shared and if anybody is interested you can actually go through it and write to me if you had any questions now coming to Climate change. I already mentioned that uh, trees have a very important role in climate change mitigation. Now, all of you are aware of climate change. And when I say mitigation, uh, it, is to, it is about the strategies that people need to adopt to A, cut down the emissions. So when I say cut down the emissions, you're talking about uh, cleaner transport systems, better buildings, um, better management of waste and so on and so forth. But then the beauty of forest or forest trees is that these are the only categories which can actually sink in carbon or suck up the carbon. Now, this is a process which all of you are aware of. This is your school science, that is photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is the only process which actually ca captures carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. So that's why 
the role of trees in climate change mitigation is very, very large. So that's why we talk about this. Now, when we let's look at the linkage here now, right? The, it's a two way process. Now, biodiversity and climate change runs both ways. Uh, when there is a change in the climate, the biodiversity is actually threatened. There have been cases where certain trees have gone extinct because of climate change, right? So because of, you know, because the temperatures were very high for the species to grow, or maybe they didn't have enough soil moisture. So these are the different reasons why species have gone extinct. The same goes for certain animal species and bird species as well, the dodo. People have read about the dodo. So that's another classical case of biodiversity loss because of changes in the environment. Now, what is the other thing? You know, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment or the, the SDGs that you, uh, you might be looking at, the Sustainable Development Goals, all of these speak about climate change actually being one of the main drivers that affects ecosystems. So because of the consequence of a climate change, uh, the biodiversity gets impacted, the way it is distributed right uh, or you know increased extinction rate or change in the reproduction timing and if there is any avid bird watcher in the group here you will agree that you know if you are looking at migrant species the arrival of these migrant birds changes has changed over time that's primarily because of climate change and also length of growing season or if you have a tree flowering tree there are people who watch it very clearly and they say okay uh, Okay, this tree used to flower at, uh, you know, during February, but this year it started right in Jan or in December itself. So these kind of changes are already being seen and it is an impact of climate change. Now, whenever I grow a forest, I'm saying, I'm talking about carbon sink or talking about sequestration of carbon. Now, how does this happen? It happens in, into the, we call it the carbon pool of the trees. One is your stem or above the ground system, which is your crown and the main trunk of the tree. The second is the root system, which is below the ground, which also sinks in carbon. And of course you have the leaves, you have the reproductive parts. It could be the fruit, it could be the seed. And of course the fifth and largest carbon pool is the soil. Because the minute you grow a tree, the soil underneath it is intact and it is not exposed to sunlight, which I already explained. The process of oxidation is kind of slowed down. So that's why when you create a, a forest ecosystem or when you promote biodiversity through forest, then you actually create a carbon sink as well. So for addressing climate mitigation, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, Afforestation or creating a plantation. Planting trees is one of the options. And there are multiple benefits of growing trees. One is ecological, as we already discussed. You know, you promote biodiversity, you create ecosystem services, you create habitats, a whole lot of them. There are social benefits also, which is, you know, the air we breathe is cleaner. There are healthier environments created. And people also, gay, uh, you know, uh, gather certain forest produce and sell it and get income. So, which is the economic component. And of course, there is a need for multiple stakeholders, like people like you and me to play a role. Because there's so much of land that's there where planting needs to be done. And of course, there is a national goal, uh, uh, the nationally determined contribution, which is NDC. Uh, that's Government of India's commitment to a climate convention. That's the Paris Agreement, where it committed that it will create 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 sequestration that might happen. So there is need to create more and more forests, which calls for more and more stakeholders to play a role. So the purpose of all this is to promote green thinking. If we can promote ourselves, if we could get ourselves to think green, I'm sure the path that we walk would be greener and we can create a greener world in the process and we will have a lot to gain by doing this in the years to come. Thank you.
I can't hear. Please unmute yeah. yourself if you're yeah. speaking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Talk was really very informative. I hope students will implement in their day to day life. Thank you for such a wonderful uh, uh, note about the biodiversity. Uh, I request now students, if you have any kind of uh, uh, questions or anything to discuss with madam, you can drop your uh, message in the drop box, in the uh, chat box, or you can ask directly questions. Over to students. You can unmute yourself and you can ask question to madam. Okay, some of the students, they have left a message to my WhatsApp, ma'am. So I'll share that okay. with you later. You can uh, uh, yeah. give answers. Okay. Definitely. Thank you, ma'am. I express my sincere thanks and gratitude to you, ma'am, on behalf of Kaylee Management and also on my personal behalf for accepting our invitation and also for gracing this occasion. My Thank pleasure. You. So think green, live green and all of us will be will have a happier future. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good day. Well, on behalf of Kaylee Society's S. Nijlingappa College, I thank Dr. Uh, Indu K. Okay, Murthy Ma'am for accepting our invitation again and for sharing her rich views on celebrating biodiversity. Thank you once again, Ma'am. I also extend my thanks to Ms. Sahana from Students for Development Organization for her support in conducting this webinar. Thank you, Sahana. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really nice to uh, organize with you people and it was a great experience. Uh, we from Students for Development, it is an organization of students which work on biodiversity types like 5J, Gen, Jungle, Jameen, Janwar and Jal. So all these are most important for any human society. So we uh, generally work on the sustainable development. So we do many activities as for that. Uh, many seminars, many uh, internship programs for that. I hope we will uh, have to continue all these things in yes. hand with uh, Ma'am also, Indu Ma'am also, and uh, with your students, Ma'am also. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Definitely, we'll be in touch with Indu Madam. She, she is very friendly and student uh, frequency. She'll match also. Uh, in another 15 days, we'll I'll invite Madam once again for one more uh, session with her permission. Sure, Pratibha. That will be my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Finally, I extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to all the participants for being with us on behalf of Kaylee Management, principal, heads of various departments, faculty. Wish you all a very happy World Environment Day on behalf of Kaylee Management. Stay safe, protect yourself, protect others, maintain social distance. We look forward for your cooperation in our upcoming events. Thank you for listening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.